Number 11. The last question in paper 1 of the 2007 Higher Maths. Part A. Express this. Notice you've got the same angle here. Express this in the form of k cos. That's the wave function question. Express this in the form of k cos x minus a. And it says that k is greater than 0 for when you do your square root. And a is an, uh, an acute angle between 0 and pi upon 2. And of course, noticing it's in radians. You know it's in radians anyway, because there are no degree signs in that part. Well, the first part of this, I'll need to expand that. So you look up the front, and you get that you'll have k times. You can either put the k down twice, or maybe I'll just leave the k outside just now. The expansion would be cos x cos a, the opposite way around, plus sine x sine a. And of course, when I said the opposite way around, at the front you will see cos a plus or minus b and the expansion as minus plus. So if I'm using the lower, I use the lower. And then I'll just explicitly rearrange the factors in each term to look like this. So in the first one, it's the x that's the variable, so it's the cos x that goes to the end. Anything else is just a number, the k and the cos a, they would go in front. So I've got k cos a times it. Plus, and again the k is multiplying here, it's the sin x, which is the variable part. The k and the sin a are just constants that are multiplying it. So k sin a. Put them in brackets just to emphasise that those are the coefficients, so I can equate them with this side. How many cos, a, cos x here? This, k cos a. So k cos a will equal, how many cos x here? Root 3. Sin x's. How many sin x have I got here? I've got k sin a. How many sin x's have I got here? I've got 1. So k sin a equals 1. I'm going to put that on top. k sin a equals 1. Now what you really have are a pair of simultaneous equations to solve for k and a. And the techniques are, to find k, you square and add them. And if you do square and add them, you'll end up with k squared equals 1 squared plus root 3 squared. That'll be 1 plus 3, I'll just jump straight in with 4, and so k will be the square root, which is 2. Now it could be plus or minus 2, but it said here k was greater than 0, so I'm just using the 2. So k is 2. You may well just put that down as a little bit of Pythagoras, but the real reason is you've got simultaneous equations. Same with a. How can I find a? I need rid of k. How do you get a k? Dividing them. If you do 1 divided by 2, the k's will cancel out. And that's why I put the sine first, because a sine over a cosine gives you a tangent. Then the tangent of a will be 1 over root 3. In which case a is going to be, you can write inverse tan if you like, but remember this is paper 1, so this is one of the ones you should know. 1s and 2s and root 3s come from that 60-30 triangle. I know it's in radians, but I'm just going to Keep it in pounds, shillings and pence just now. The 60-30 triangle goes 1, 2, root 3. So if the tangent of this angle gives me 1 over root 3, that's the opposite over the adjacent. It's opposite the 30. That means that A is going to be 30 degrees, which is pi upon 6. Now, I didn't put down the cast diagram because I knew already it was going to be acute from here. But if you wanted that little confirmation of the cast diagram, all sign tan cos, cast, then... What we'd have for this angle is it's got to satisfy these conditions, which are the sine had to be a positive, and the cosine also had to be a positive, which just left you with the only choice as the angle in the first quadrant, the acute angle. So there's k and there's a, which means I can rewrite f of x as 2 whoops, cos x minus pi upon 6. Now, part B, hence or otherwise, well, it's going to be hence, obviously, sketch the graph of y equals f of x in the interval 0 to 2 pi. 0 to 360, in ordinary terms. Well, what have we got here? I'm not going to try and draw that. It's easy to draw this, because there's only been a couple of alterations to it. It's a cosine graph, so I know what that looks like. A cosine graph should start at the top, go down to the bottom, and finish off by 2 pi. And if it happens to say 2, that means it'll just be going from 2 to negative 2, but it's got a shift. 
it's a shift of pi upon 6, 30 degrees. And remember, a subtraction within the brackets has the effect of moving it forward. So what's going to happen to this graph is it's all going to shift forward. Another way of thinking of that is that, in fact, the, the y-axis moves back the 30 degrees. And of course, if you're going back the 30 degrees there, you'll have to stop equivalently here before you get to the top. So that's the way the graph would look. So setting that out, what's it going to look like? It goes from 2 to negative 2. It doesn't start at the top. It's starting at the top slightly further on. It's starting at the top here. It's starting at the top 30 degrees, pi upon 6 further on. So that's pi upon 6, 2 at the top. Not sure where that part was. Now from that, I'll just draw in the picture. So it's back up again until you just level with it here. And that's where I stop, and that'll be one complete wavelength of 2 pi. can fill this part in. This part's going to be down at the bottom, which will be at negative 2. Now it should have been, whoops, it should have been for an ordinary cosine, you get to the bottom at 180, which is pi. So that's going to be pi plus pi upon 6. That's 6 sixths plus a 6, so that must be 7 pi upon 6. It's quite a tedious business going through all of this. Next part's going to be, where does it cut the axis here? Remember, it's not been shifted vertically, so those are still clean cuts. That should have happened at pi upon 2. Pi upon 2 is 3 out of 6, so if you add another one, that'll be 4 out of 6 but 4 out of 6 cancels down to 2 upon 3. This should cut again at 3 pi upon 2. That would be 9 pi upon 6. Add on another one would make 10 pi upon 6. That cancels down to 5 pi upon 3, so that points out, it's getting a bit messy here. 5 pi upon 3. What does that still leave? These two parts here, do I need to put them both in? I need to put this one in for certain. Now for this one, this isn't a simple shift of that, I'll have to do a calculation. What happens when x is 0? I know something about the point, x is 0, so I'll just have to do that. So what's y when x is 0? If x is 0, y is going to be 2 cos 0 minus pi upon 6. So it's going to be 2 cos negative pi upon 6. Think of the graph, where is negative pi upon 6? Well, negative means you're going back. You're going back, if you like, 30 degrees. And is it positive or negative there? It's positive. So that's the same as cos pi upon 6. It's the same as cos 30. And the cos of 30 is root 3 upon 2. You can either draw your triangle to remind yourselves of that if you haven't learnt the table properly. It'd be better remembering how to do the triangles, if it was a choice of which one you're going to learn by rote, because the triangles are very useful. If that's 30 and that's 60, that must be the 1, 2, root 3, one opposite the shortest. So the cosine is root 3 upon 2. Or you can just remember, it's the sine of 30 that's a half. So the cos of 30 can't be. It must be the, the other one. So that gives me root 3. So that cuts that axis at root 3. Not sure if they want this one. That would be at 2 pi root 3, because you must finish where you started for one complete wavelength. There, that's part B, and the end of question 11, and the end of paper 1 of the 2007 higher.